Today I'm at Chew Valley Lake to meet Lucy, who doesn't have to travel far to find her stunning images. Landscapes is what I really prefer to do. So sunrise, sunset. Well, mainly sunrise because I'm, I'm usually in bed too early to do sunset. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, you're a mum, so you've got to balance your... I am your... a mum, so yeah, that's yeah. helped, I think, the last few years getting up really early. Especially in the winter, I can get hit sunrise. So the mist is always rolling in if, it's, if the conditions are right and you can get some stunning shots. You've got some lovely ones at Choose Stoke Church. Yeah, I think they're some of my favourite ones I've taken, actually. And do you purposely think, oh, it's a lovely misty morning, I'll go and I do. find a vantage point yes. to get that shot? Yeah, it's a nice spot there. You know, the mist just rolling off the field up there, some stunning colours as well. So tell me, how long have you lived in the Chew Valley? Three years now. It's so relatively I, recent. It is quite recent. I grew up on a farm just outside Wells, just down the road. Ah. Um, so we've got a big tractor going by. <laughs> so yeah, so I grew up on a farm, so I was obviously surrounded by nature and wildlife. And I used to do a lot of bird watching when I was at school. We used to come up to Chew Valley Lake. Lucy's pictures are starting to get noticed. And last year, they were used in a lovely book about the lake. Last summer I was approached by someone who'd seen some of my photos on Instagram and he was involved in a book called Birds of the Chew Valley Lake and they wanted to have just a few photos of landscapes around the lake so I gave them some of those and a few of my bird photos and they published it at the end of last year. Really lovely book. Even if you're less mobile, Chew Valley Lake is very accessible. We're on Harriet's Bridge at the moment which is the side of the lake closest to Bishop Sutton. Um, it's very popular in the summer, you get a lot of ice cream vans and a lot of people coming out down here. But we've got a pool on one side, so in the winter, again, when the water's a bit lower, there can be quite a few waders down here, which is quite interesting to see. I have seen the kingfisher as well, and the, there's a big willow tree over there. And sometimes he sits right in the lower branches of it, and I have been lucky enough to get a couple of shots of him just sat there. And look at these guys. Oh, they're so tame. The swans have been courting recently. I was really hoping the other day to get the beautiful heart-shaped image of them like ah. face on and you think, well, it's going to be easy to do. There's so many swans down here, it's mating season. So it's like a mating dance? Yeah. Ah. Oh, look over there. You see those? Oh, yeah. See in a minute, they might do their heart shape. So they just mimic each other. Oh, well, it's the first ones I've seen do that one morning. Come on. <laughs> At this angle. But of course, oh. the birds have a mind of their own. Almost. <laughs> there we go, up at the water. I've never seen them come out like that on the right angle either. It just reminds me, do you remember that Kit Kat advert years ago? Oh, oh, they, yeah, they, they yes, turn round and then... The dancing pandas. The pandas, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, what strikes me is some of your pictures you could take with a phone. Or... Yeah, easily. And I think sometimes you can get a better photo <laughs> with a phone because you've got so many settings that you can fill with and get wrong and focus, it depends on the aperture. So for, for someone who's never taken a picture of a swan or a wild bird before, mm. would, you, would you say just come down here? Definitely come down with a phone, you know, it's so easy. There we go, see what I'm trying to do is just get a little bit more level. It's a pretty good vantage point down here. And then I always try and focus on the eye of the bird. And make sure that you've got the eye in the photo, because often they turn their head. There's a lot to think about when you're composing. What I love about the swans as well is the feather movement when they're preening themselves, like that one over there. Look how close they are. You can just get a close-up of just a few of the feathers alone. And if you can get the beak when they're going under the wings, they're lovely. They give you plenty of inspiration for photos. Look at this one here, that swan coming in. A beautiful, look at the wings. Like something out of a ballet. Isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, it's an egret, a great white egret. That's oh, a great white egret. Yeah. I thought it was a heron. For Lucy, this area is a very special place. I grew up in Somerset, anyway, as I said, and I grew up on a farm, so the rural life and the countryside is so, so important for me. Um, and I think no more so than in, in lockdown, you know, the last year, how important it's been just to, to be able to get out. We're so lucky to be able to do that. But the lake as well, I think having such a huge water feature, I suppose it is, with all the life that has around it. And so many people don't even realise it's here. It's just something we really must never take for granted. Mm -hmm.